Hey everybody, it's Craig with Smartphone Enemy. We got a great face off for you today. The Motorola Atrix 4G versus a Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc, latest flagship out of Sony Ericsson. Don't forget to stop by smartphoneenemy.com, check out the written review, my winner of today's face off, along with photos and videos taken by both of today's contestants. All right, let's kick this off. Motorola Atrix 4G quad band GSM, tri band 3G, along with what AT&T calls their 4G connectivity. Weighs in at 135 grams, so it's definitely the heavier of the two. As far as build quality, uh, case itself is made out of metal, and you can see it here. The case of the phone is made out of metal, which is very nice. as your battery, 1930 milliamp battery, SIM card slot. You can see here, you can flip this up to hot swap the uh, micro SD card, your camera. Uh, the case itself, they have a rubberized plastic. You've got Gorilla Glass here on the front, along with some high grade plastic around the edges. Uh, but it's the battery case that I'm not crazy about. It covers the top, bottom, back, and both sides. Uh, it seems to me that was somewhat of an afterthought after the phone was already designed, but it fits on just fine. Now on the back lower left hand corner, you'll find the phone speaker. Above that is the camera, along with dual LED flash, your fingerprint reader, along with power and lock key, second microphone. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the right hand side is the volume rocker. Nothing on the bottom and on the left hand side HDMI port as well as the micro USB port. All right, the Xperia Arc quad band GSM, dual band 3G, no 4G connectivity, weighs in at 117 grams. It's very light as far as build quality. You've got scratch resistant glass over the front. You've got some high grade plastic for the most part, uh, chrome accents, top sides, well as the bottom. Battery cover itself again is made out of a rubberized plastic, as you can see here, quite bendable. Uh, battery, you have 1500 milliamp battery. You do need to remove the battery to replace or exchange a micro SD card, which you can see there. SIM card slot, get the cover back on here for you. Quite easy. You got the phone speaker down here at the bottom. Above that is the 8 megapixel camera and LED flash. Up on top, power and lock key, which I think is a little bit too recessed, needs to stick out a little bit more. HDMI port. On the right hand side is micro USB port, volume rocker, dedicated camera key. On the bottom is the microphone, your two holes for a lantern loop. And then on the left hand side is a 3.5mm headphone jack. Alright, as far as cameras go, the Atrix 4G offers a 5 megapixel camera with autofocus, LED flash, geotagging, face detection, as well as image stabilization, video capture 720p at 30 frames per second. On the Xperia Arc 8 megapixel camera with autofocus LED flash, touch focus, image stabilization, geotagging, as well as face and smile detection. So a few more features on the camera along with uh, three more megapixels. Video captures the same 720p at 30 frames per second. As far as batteries, the Atrix 4G has a 1930 milliamp hour battery rated at 9 hours of talk time on 3G. The Arc has a 1500 milliamp battery rated at 7 hours of talk time on 3G. Alright, let's take a look at the displays. So we have a couple of nice ones here. Back to our home screen on both. There we go. Alright, on the Atrix 4G, you've got a 4 inch QHD capacitive touch display showing 540 by 960 pixels, offers an accelerometer sensor, proximity sensor, as well as multi-touch. Upper left-hand corner, you've got a front-facing camera for video calls. Below the display, you have four touch-sensitive keys, main menu, home key, back key, and search key. On the Xperia Arc, you've got a 4.2-inch Super LCD capacitive touch display showing 480 by 854 pixels. Again, it offers an accelerometer sensor, proximity sensor, as well as multi-touch. There is no front-facing camera for video calls. Below the display, you have three physical keys, back key, home key, as well as a main menu key. As far as memory, the Atrix 4G offers 16 gigabytes of internal storage, one gigabyte of RAM. Internal storage can be expanded an additional 32 gigabytes to the use of a micro SD card. The Xperia Arc comes with 320 megabytes of internal storage, 512 megabytes of RAM, and internal storage can be expanded an additional 32 gigabytes to the use of a micro SD card. Both of them offer Wi-Fi 802.11 with support for DLNA, excuse me, 802.11 BGNN with support for DLNA. They both have HDMI out ports. Both of them offer Bluetooth version 2.1 with support for A2DP, GPS with support for AGPS. Both can be used as Wi-Fi hotspots. The processor on the Motorola Atrix 4G is the NVIDIA dual core 1 gigahertz processor 
on the Xperia Arc. It's Qualcomm's latest MSM8255 Snapdragon, 1 gigahertz processor. Operating system on the Atrix 4G is Android 2.2 Froyo, and on the Xperia Arc, it's Android 2.3 Gingerbread. All right, as you can see, I had a chance to stop by the Android market and download the Quadrant Standard Benchmark app on both of our contestants. So what do you say we run this? And it looks like we're off to a good clean start. Keep in mind, the Atrix 4G has the NVIDIA dual-core 1 gigahertz process versus the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arcs Qualcomm MSM8255 Snapdragon single-core 1 gigahertz processor. It's the latest Snapdragon processor out of Qualcomm on the Arc, and as you can see, the Arc is already into 3D graphics ahead of the uh, Atrix 4G. This test is also great for getting a good look at the displays on both. And you'll notice in the lower left-hand corner of the displays, you're getting frames per second as well as frame rates. And we've got one more 3D graphic test left on the Arc. After that, we'll have our benchmark score. There we go. All right, on the arc, came back with a score of 1656. Top of the heap. And what do we get on the Atrix 28? Looks like 2835. Very small type, kind of difficult to read. But obviously, the Atrix with its dual core processor was the definite winner of our benchmark test. I would say we run a couple of YouTube videos on each of our contestants, and we'll start out with the ARC here. We'll go to the main menu, find YouTube, there it is. Load the YouTube client, we'll do the same here. And we'll load the YouTube client. And we've got them both set up. Let's go to browse on both. And we'll hit all. Oh, I want to go to YouTube client, let's go browse. There we go, all, and let's make this today on both. There we go, and we should get a couple at the top. Yep, all right. Let's get these bad boys into position. So we've got the arc up on top and the atrix below it. And hot twins, and we're off. Again, they're both running off the same Wi-Fi network. They're both set to default to HQ. Yo, All right, uh, let me do this. Let me turn up the volume on the media volume up on that and down on the Atrix. And let's find another one. Let's see. Get these lined up for you. There we go. There's one. There's the other. And not sure what this is, but let's do it. And we're off. And apparently I picked a video that has no audio on it. Because someone should be yelling, Go! All right, let's try one more then. And we're off. Yeah, pretty close. Atrix took that. All right, that was the speaker we were listening to on the ARC that time. I don't know if you remember, the first one we ran was Atrix had the Atrix speaker turned up. Uh, as far as speed of download, the Atrix 4G1 uh, took two out of three. As far as uh, quality of this display when watching the video, they're both set to default HQ. I'll leave that up to you, and I'll let you decide which one you like better. Both of them look really good from where I'm sitting. So there's our YouTube comparison. All right, what do you say we run our navigation test? And again, there's no dedicated search key on the uh, Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc, so I'll use the on-screen Google search to kick them off at the same time. 
navigate to Corner Bakery. Turn left at Coffee Way, then turn left at Lot and Turn left at Spring Circle toward Coffee Way, then turn left at Coffee Way, turn left at Coffee Way. Well, they both did very well, as you could hear. Neither one of them had any problem grabbing the GPS and providing the voice-guided turn-by-turn navigation. As you can see, the Xperia Arc is still working away. There's a look at the uh, satellite view. And you can see it's very smooth and scrolling, no problems whatsoever. Double tap to zoom in. Multi-touch to zoom out, or pinch to zoom out, or whatever you want to call it. And try a little... Scrolling around is our ocean. It draws pretty quick. Redraws pretty quick. All oh, let's try the Atrix. Seems to be about the same. Again, you can double tap to zoom in. Multi touch to zoom out. And we'll run this out. There we go. Oh, we're out over the ocean. Why don't we try and redraw over land? Doesn't even need to redraw, it just keeps it. So anyway, there's a look at navigation. Both of them pass with flying colors on the Motorola Atrix 4G and Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc. All right, what do you say we run our own unofficial speed test since we got a couple of the hottest smartphones out there in front of us? And I've downloaded Advanced Task Killer on both, so let's kill as many of the background tasks as possible. See, the Atrix not going to kill them all. And let's start out with messaging. And that appeared to be the Atrix 4G by quite a bit. Let's do Gmail. And that looked to be the Atrix. Let's try uh, Market on both. That looked pretty close to a tie. Let's try Maps on both. That seemed to be the Atrix 4G. Atrix seems to have less animation working. Um, let's try opening up the camera app on both. And that definitely seemed like the Atrix was ready to shoot sooner. I'd open the gallery, but there really isn't much in the gallery on the uh, uh, Arc. Let's do Calendar. And that was definitely the Atrix again. And let's open up Movies. And that was definitely the Atrix. Let's try loading the video as well. And after all of that, the arc loaded the video a little quicker. <laughs> Go figure. Anyway, there's our unofficial speed test.